The AE600 Active Equalizer plugin by MicDSP is the next generation of active equalization. Unique EQ modes, independent control of fixed and active EQ bands, and a zero latency algorithm make the AE600 the perfect solution for any audio production. The AE600 features six fixed EQ bands alongside six active EQ bands. All 12 of these bands feature gain, peak, Q, mode, link, and solo controls, and all six active EQ bands feature threshold, ratio, attack, and release sliders, along with a selectable key signal control. The AE600 also features input and output metering and control, a plot with an RTA, and high pass and low pass filters. Let's check out these features in more detail and then hear the AE600 in action. Let's start at the top of the plugin UI which features all the controls that all 12 of the plugin's active and fixed bands have in common. Each active and fixed band is paired up together to form a total of six sets of bands that are labeled one through six. First up are some useful monitoring features present on each band, IO curves and input meters. The meter to the left of each band's controls is an input meter. These meters monitor the level at each band's input stage, and their peak values are displayed underneath each band's peak text readout. The numbered plots in each band represent the I.O. curve of the active EQ response. Active EQ gain and ratio controls will update this plot, showing how the dynamics of the active EQ will respond to input signals. At the top of each set of bands are active and fixed buttons to engage or bypass the active and fixed equalizer for that band. Below these buttons are gain, peak, and Q controls, each of which can be modified by clicking and dragging in any direction on its respective text readout or by clicking the text readout and typing a value into it directly. Gain adjusts the amount of boost or cut for each EQ band while peak adjusts the frequency at which the boost or cut is at maximum. Finally, Q controls the width of the bell shape for parametric EQ curves, or some other shape characteristic for other EQ mode settings. That brings us to the mode setting, which controls each band's EQ type and can give us a variety of EQ and filter shapes. Clicking a mode value will reveal a menu of types to choose from that includes standard, proportional Q, and 5x Q parametric EQ, Baxendall, Vintage and X-Style Shelving EQ, Filtering and Shelving EQ Combinations, and Filtering. These different EQ modes, available for each fixed and active EQ band, make the AE600 a very flexible audio production tool. Our next three features help set up and augment the control over all AE600 active and fixed equalizer bands. First, the solo button, marked by an S within a circle beneath each band's fixed controls, solos the effect of any set of bands. Active Fixed Lock can be enabled by clicking the lock symbol in between the Active and Fixed Enable buttons above each band. When Active Fixed Lock is enabled, changes made to the peak and Q parameters of the fixed band will also affect the peak and Q values on the respective active band, making it much easier for the fixed and active bands to work together. The AE600 takes this functionality one step further with the Link feature, which can be utilized with each band's M and L buttons located directly above the solo buttons. To get started with the link feature, click the M button on one band to designate it as the master band. Then, click the L button on any other bands to link them to the master band. Now any changes made to the master band will be reflected on the linked bands. Holding the shift key and pressing the M button on any band expedites this process even more by designating the selected band as the master while also linking all other bands to it. The link feature affects not just the active and fixed EQ controls, it also affects the active EQ dynamics controls at the bottom of the UI. Threshold, ratio, attack, and release. We'll cover these now. The response of each active EQ band in the AE600 is handled by the controls beneath the plot view. Just like the controls along the top of the plugin UI, these controls can be modified either with their sliders or by clicking the parameter's text readout and typing a value into it directly. Threshold designates the level above which input signal is attenuated. The threshold control is particularly useful because it can be inverted with the INV button. In normal operation, 
The act of equalization starts as the signal level rises above the threshold, but with the INV button engaged, active equalization starts as the signal level falls below the threshold. Note that each band's threshold control can also be modified via the orange triangle to the left of each band's input meter. This is a very useful and efficient way to set threshold values. Next up are ratio, attack, and release. Ratio sets the slope between the input and output signal levels. Attack specifies the rate at which the active EQ gain reduces signal levels exceeding the threshold, and release sets the rate at which the active EQ gain approaches unity once input signal levels are below the threshold. Below these four controls are each band's key and listen controls. The key signal of each active EQ band can be the original input by selecting INT, or an external sidechain by selecting EXT. Either selection is filtered by the key filter for that band. The speaker icon button, when pressed, allows the user to monitor the key signal for a given active EQ band. Now let's move towards the middle of the plugin UI to take a closer look at the AE600's plot view. This is where the user can gain a detailed visual understanding of the plugin's processing. The response of fixed EQ bands is shown in solid colors while the maximum active EQ responses are shown in a more transparent shade. A white line shows the total combined response of the six bands of the AE600, along with the active EQ action caused by signal levels triggering each band's active EQ. Clicking the key button will allow the user to observe the key filter responses for each band. Any EQ band can be enabled or disabled with the group of buttons to the lower left of the plot area. Each band's gain and peak values can be altered by clicking and dragging the dot for any band on the plot. The effect of the AE600's processing can be visually observed at a more detailed level by enabling the RTA, or Real-Time Analyzer button, at the bottom right corner of the plot. Before moving on to some audio examples, let's wrap up with the parameters found on the left side of the AE600's UI. Input, output, band enable buttons, and high pass and low pass pre-filtering. Moving from bottom to top, first up are the high pass and low pass filters, which come before all fixed and active EQ processing in the AE600's signal flow. To enable or disable either of these filters, simply click their respective HPF or LPF text. Both of these filters can be set to a slope of either 6 or 12 dB per octave, and their frequency range covers the entire audio spectrum. Immediately above the low pass filter controls are band enable buttons. Clicking any of these buttons will enable or disable their respective active and fixed bands functionality. Finally, above these buttons are input and output knobs. These knobs control the level at the AE600's input and output stages, respectively. To gain a visual understanding of their effects, use the meters and peak value text readouts to their left. Now onto some audio examples. In this vocal track, the vocalist is singing very close to the microphone, resulting in lots of low-end and low-mid boom, breaths, and mouth sounds. Here's what it sounds like with and without the AE600. There is no past. There is no future. Only now. Only now. Only now. There is no past. There is no future. Only now, only now, only now. Here's how we used the AE600 to not only remove all these unwanted sounds, but to also EQ the vocal and get it sounding great, starting with the active EQ bands. Active bands 3, 4, and 5 all have their thresholds inverted to get rid of unwanted breaths and mouth sounds. Active Band 4 is applying this gating effect to almost the entire frequency spectrum with the High Shelf BX mode, while Active Bands 3 and 5 are focused on cutting out breaths. Additionally, Active Band 1 is dynamically attenuating boominess on the High Pass Filter EQ mode, and Active Band 6 is acting as a de-esser. 
Finally, fixed bands 2, 3, and 6 are reducing boominess and boosting high end, respectively. On to the next example. The AE600 can clean up other types of tracks too, not just vocal tracks. Let's hear what it can do with some boxy and boomy kick and snare tracks that have too much bleed from other elements of the drum kit. On the left we have an AE600 instance on the kick, and then on the right is an instance that's on the snare. We'll start with the kick. First, Active Band 6 has an inverted threshold on the high shelf BX mode, so it can act as a gate to eliminate bleed. No other active bands are engaged. Instead, fixed bands 2 and 3 are taming boominess at 143Hz and boxiness at 348Hz. Lastly, fixed bands 4 and 5 are pushing more attack out of this kick drum at 1.9 kHz and 3.9 kHz. The snare AE600 instance is set up similarly. Active band 6 is acting as a gate just like it was on the kick instance, and there are no other active bands engaged. Fixed band 2 is giving us more punch at 128 Hz. Fixed bands 3 and 5 are cutting out boxiness at 266 Hz and 710 Hz, and fixed band 6 is boosting high end at 3.9 kHz with the high shelf BX mode. Just like we did with the vocal, we used the AE600 to not only eliminate lots of unwanted noise, but we also used it to EQ these drums and shape their tone. Perfect. This next example is an electric guitar with some low end that gets too boomy when palm mutes are played. It also has some harsh pick attack and scraping sounds. Let's hear the plugin in action. First, I'm utilizing the AE600's high pass and low pass filters with 12 dB per octave slopes at 76 Hz and 10.7 kHz respectively. I'm also using every active band. Active bands 2 and 3 are attenuating lows and low mids every time a palm mute is played, but their thresholds are set up such that they don't perform any attenuation when the guitarist is not playing palm mutes. Also, active bands 1, 4, 5, and 6 are all working together to attenuate the pick attack sounds coming from this guitar in the high mids. Finally, the only fixed band that's engaged is fixed band 6. I didn't want the four active bands that are attenuating the high mids to make this guitar too dark, so I'm using band 6 to consistently raise the volume of the high end from 2.9 kHz and up. Now onto a drum bus example. Let's hear what these drums sound like with and without the plugin. Again, let's dissect these settings starting with the active EQ bands. Active band 2 is boosting the lows and low mids of the kick. I'm using an active band instead of a fixed band here because I only want to boost this frequency in the kick, not in the snare. So the threshold is set such that the kick causes the boost, but the snare doesn't. Next, active band 1 is attenuating 92Hz to fine tune the curve of active band 2 and active band 6 is dynamically boosting high end on the BX high shelf mode. The last active band is 4, which is boosting some 1.7 kHz whenever the drums fall under its threshold with the help of its inverted threshold. The only fixed band being used here is fixed band 1, and it's boosting the subs down at 38 Hz to enhance the low end punch of the kick. In this final example, let's hear the AE600's sidechain functionality in an EDM mix. 
The plugin is instantiated on a bus that every track in this song, except for the drums, is routed to. Also, the drum bus is set as the sidechain input of the AE600, so the plugin's movement will be based off the drums. Let's hear it in action. The only band that's engaged in the plugin is Active Band 3. This band is set all the way down at 21 Hz, and it's performing up to 24 dB of gain reduction. It's got very fast attack and release times and a 2 to 1 ratio. Its mode is high shelf BX so that it can cover most of the frequency spectrum, and the threshold is set such that the music ducks only when drum transients come in. Lastly, if you try these settings out yourself, don't forget to set the band's key to external towards the bottom of the UI, or else the external sidechain signal will have no effect. Here's an additional example where the AE600 is performing similar processing on a completely different song. The AE600 Active EQ plugin by MicDSP is one of the most powerful Active EQ plugins of all time. Not only does it offer the versatility needed to make any track sound great, but it can even perform various audio cleanup tasks, such as getting rid of drum bleed and unwanted vocal noises. Interested in learning more? Try out the AE600 Active Equalizer free 14-day trial at the link in the description. It can be purchased on its own, and it is also included in the All Access subscription, as well as the Everything Pack and Live Pack 2 plugin bundles. We've linked all of these options in the description as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more MCTSP tips and content. Also, feel free to use the links in the description to follow us on other social media platforms. We will see you next time.